Launch, you ready? Yep. All right, guys. So welcome to the third installment in our uh, 3LT playbook webinar series. There's four webinars in this series. We're, there's three laws, but there's four webinars. So we're uh, throwing a little bit of a curveball at you guys with that. Um, today I am joined, I'm Charlie Bathgate, partner at Sangluji Trading, and I am joined by the one and only Ron Ronchero Friedman. Say hello to everybody, Ron. What's up? So Ron is a huge, he's been a big contributor and part of our community in the Wall Street Jesus Sandwich Steam Room for a long time. He's a ridiculous trader, um, which you guys will definitely see firsthand here as we go through some of what he, what he does and, and how he teaches. He's also become a guest educator uh, for the Sandwich Master Course, which is you know, the number of people that Lucci has entrusted to help teach this course in the basically 10 years that we've been doing this, you can count on one hand. Like, there's probably three people total. So that gives you an idea of the respect that we have for uh, for Ranch. I'm going to refer to him as Ranch throughout this webinar because it's just easier to say than Ranchero. Um, for Ranch, uh, the respect that we have for him, the respect that he has in the room, um, it's you know, don't don't doubt it. It's it's huge, and it's for good reason, which you guys are about to see. So um, today we are going to be talking about basically bringing together um, law one of the of the playbook, which is learn to see. We talked about this in the previous webinar all about tape reading, um, really understanding how the markets work and the tactics that you need in order to trade successfully. Um, and then law number three, which we're going to be going into more detail on and more depth on uh, with Lucci on Tuesday, but that's uh, know yourself, learn yourself, right? So that's all about the psychology of this, of how you trade. And, and um, once you learn how to do it, once you learn how to block out the noise and, and discern the right source of information for yourself, it's all about your own mind and your own understanding of yourself and how to take the, that understanding of yourself, mesh it, meld it with the strategies that you know and apply that to the markets. So. Um, that's part of what we're going to be talking about today. One of the reasons that we love having Ranch teach the course and, and do webinars like this is because he is so good. He sits at the intersection of so many things that are so crucial to, to what we do. Tape reading, options, um, you know, trading psychology, flow. Ranch brings all of that together and not only can he do it extremely well, but he's willing to talk about it openly, which most people who make as much money trading as Ranch does do not want to talk to, to, to other people about this guy. So um, this is going to be good. Like I said, drop questions uh, into the chat and we'll get to them at the end in the Q&A. And with that, let's, um, let's dive in. And so can we start out, give us like a one minute background. There are other webinars out there, guys, if you want to know really uh, Ranch's story in depth, it's pretty wild. I'll, I'll, I'll drop them to him. Drop a link to him in, in the, the description on YouTube. But Ranch, can you give everyone just like a one minute um, background? You know, yep. how you guys um, so I've, I've been trading for a long time and I got involved in um, the markets. I, I don't know, maybe like a lot of other people did. Um, you know, I, I saw uh, Wall Street. That was one of those things that, that hooked me. I remember stories about um, my parents' friends, you know, investing in Microsoft at like, a dollar eighty, stuff like that, and it was just it just always fascinated me that you could take a small amount of money, invest it, and and have it grow to a point to where it changes your life, right? I mean, that's that's kind of the that, that's kind of the reason why a lot of us are here um, is to it, you know number one is to is to get that money so that you can do the things that you want to do. So that was very appealing to me. Um, I went through a ton of ups and downs and you know you'll hear a lot of people say well I, I blew out an account and blah 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 I've blown out some really big accounts um, it's not a badge of honor in my humble opinion it's just something that happens and when you blow out an account at least from my standpoint it it, it, it says hey you were you were an idiot and you, you've got to go back and you did something wrong you've got to figure out what you did wrong you've got to figure out why you you made those decisions and if you are able to change those habits and behaviors and become smarter about what it is that you're doing. So over time, um, what I found was a mentor who was uh, a floor trader 
traded on the Philly and traded um, at the time Apple and Dell and I can't remember what else um, was in his book, but he's the one that taught me how to how and when to 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 build a portfolio and and make it work. And then I'm not sure how long have I been here in the room. Has it been like two and a half or three years? Does that sound like a number that's right? Yeah, for sure. Um, part of the problem with getting into your 50s is you start, I don't even remember what the hell I had for breakfast. So you start forgetting that stuff. Um, but, um, you know, I found that, you know, I went through a really, really rough time uh, after the crash of um, 09, uh, went through a really painful divorce, um, had lost a ton of money. I was living in a shared house with kids who were half my age. I was renting a room above a garage. I had custody of my kids, you know, like every other weekend and Wednesdays. And um, I mean, I scraped and I scraped and I scraped and, and I finally put, you know, a small amount of money together. And I used the strategy that my mentor had taught me to rebuild myself. So, um, for, out of out of those ruins, you know, is is what really helped put it back together for me. So, a lot of people who've taken the master course and have been through my strategy um, session understand, um, you know, what what that is and and what we're doing. A lot of people have taken what I've taught and ha and have adapted it to their own personal style and way of trading, which is fantastic because if, if you don't, like if you want to do it completely my way, you, you, you can, um, and it, it, it works. And, you know, I post in the master, the master course, um, all the time and, and people that are in there and looking, you know, can, can verify that, you know, we're given, um, really solid information about here's where we're getting into a trade. Here's why, here's the background and here's what we're doing. Um, around that trade for, for, you know, for, for the people who are following that, uh, can, you know, that, that can profit from that. So that's just a little bit about, you know, my background and, and how I've gotten to this point. And, you know, I guess the, the last caveat that I would add to that is that, you know, I, I was, I was good at what I was doing. I got a whole lot better when I got here and I learned how to read tape. I didn't know how to read tape. And even a bonus on top of that was, you know, Lucci and how he just approaches um, his view on life and trading. And a lot of those things really um, resonated with me. There were a, a lot of things that I was really clinging tightly to. And once I let those things go um, in combination with with the tape and my other skills, my my trading really, really reached a, a different level. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's one of the reasons why. You're such a good example of how things can come together because tape is, was just an immensely powerful skill set for you to learn. And we're going to talk about that, you know, in a second. But <clears throat> you want to talk about how, you know, you we we talk a lot about how strategies you can't always just take what somebody else is doing and blindly apply it to yourself. Sometimes you can, and 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 you know, you can say, okay, here's fundamental building blocks of making this work. Um, I can try this out. I can do it. But as you get more advanced and as you adapt it's you learn how to adapt those things and apply them in a way that works for you. I mean, I was listening to an old interview that we did with you prior to this, and you were talking about how sometimes you just look at all of your assets and you're like, I need to, I need to blow all this out and I'm going to, you know, kind of set up a new account. I'm going to start from scratch because you know yourself well enough psychologically. You're like, that's how I'm going to keep myself motivated. That's how I'm going to keep myself sharp. That's how I know that, that I, this is what I know I need to do in order to maintain my edge in order to, you know, keep keep at this so you meld the psychology and the strategy of things so well which is so necessary and that's like the art and science of developing as a trader as you as you go forward right i mean you learn the basics to begin with and then you learn yourself and you start continually you know layering those things on top of one another and, and meshing them together right absolutely yep yeah, there's it, it, um there's no one set you know, strategy or um, surefire way to do anything because the, the market changes all of the time. There are so many people who are so, so much smarter, have so much more money, have so much more time and are always constantly evolving and changing to gain an edge. And I have none of those resources and I have to find, you know, something that that works for me. 
And that means that I constantly have to be paying attention and trying to find, you know, something that works. So for example, I might go in with a specific type of strategy because something is set up a specific way and it's worked for me before. A perfect example is Microsoft before its earnings. And they kind of flipped the paradigm and I wasn't expecting them to flip the paradigm. But when the paradigm got flipped, I was able to adapt because I recognized what they were doing. And, and if, I, if I wasn't a tape reader and I wasn't somebody who traded in a specific stock like Microsoft, I would have just gotten run over. And, and I think a lot of people did get run over um, or they walked away break even. So um, those are, you know, those are, those are things that you learn over time and things that you, um, that you have to adapt to. And yes, I, I will look at something and, and decide everything is completely different than it was before and just scrap all of it. I mean, I've, I've been in positions where I've been up like, you know, 40 grand and I'm like, this is dumb. It, like great i'm up but that's it just wipe it all out and I'll, I'll wipe it all out and i'll start over just because something doesn't look right and it might not be something that i can explain at the time other than that just doesn't look right to me right. so yeah well and i think you touched on something in that microsoft example that is uh a question that we get all the time it gives us a good way to dive into like the meat of, of today's discussion people ask all the time how does tape reading apply to long-term trading you know, long-term trading options, right? If tape reading is about telling you what's happening in here and now, right now, what does this matter to me if I'm managing a position that's a swing trade or potentially even longer term than that? You know, you in, in the strategy that you teach in the in the master course, one of the strategies you teach, you are looking at much more long-term positions and then trading around those positions in, in a short-term basis. So can you speak a little bit to the utility of tape reading for you in managing longer-term positions? Yes. So in a long-term position and in the class that, that that I teach, my my way of approaching a long-term position is to find a quality company, quality stock that has taken a lot of lumps. And whether it's through um, you know an earnings miss, um, they came up short of you know some production number, they had a clinical trial that goes wrong, et cetera, whatever the case might be, and the stock gets punished. So basically what I'm doing in, in a long-term position like that is I'm looking, it, it's basically like flipping a house, right? It's basically looking for um, a house that is, let's say a short sale situation or, um, you know, the, the market's just not good and it's just, it's time to go and, and, and buy a house that's been beat to crap and throw some paint on it um, and then, you know, hold it and, and flip it. So, the way that I approach that is to look for something that's been beaten down. My my criteria and the specifics of which I go into detail in the class, and I, I make sure that I cover all of that. But basically, what I'm looking for is something, um, ideally, that's been cut in half and for you know from its highs. So if you get something that falls from its highs and it's cut in half, 50%, you know what we're what we're seeing is okay. Let's what is this company? Can I explain it? Can I explain what they do? Has management addressed the issue? Um, if they've addressed the issue, is there a plan and have we seen some consolidation and some good things starting to happen in it? If that's the case, then what I'm doing is I'm going out and I'm buying some long-term, some leaps, some long-term expiring far, far outdated options that are in the money. And again, I'll go into specifics about where in the money you should be buying these things. And then on a weekly basis, I'm trading around that position. And typically what I'm doing is I'm writing against that position. So if you get a stock, let's say, for example, that that trades flat for a year or, or more, you know, to me, that's that's money in the bank because all I'm doing is I'm buying that long term, that long term option. And every single week I get to write it. I can write the calls. I can write the puts. Um, I can also trade short term around it. So tape comes into huge play because if I've got a stock that's beaten down and that's now trading in a range, I can look at that range and I can say, okay, here's where it resists and here's where it supports. And now I can go take a look at tape. Does tape confirm my levels of support and resistance? And if it does, then that gives me a green light to place a trade you know, on a, on a weekly option on, on that particular um, that particular weekly, 
and and it's it's extremely lucrative because you know not only what happens over time is not only do you pay for the long-term position that you purchased now you start to bank so you know if you're a patient person and you have i have several ways that i like to try to try to try and trade and this is a separate account that i trade this long-term position in i have a separate account where i trade scalp or short term so in the long term account i'm a patient trader and i'm a writer primarily against long stock i should say long options i i never i never play stock so i, I never play common i'm always playing options so i'm a writer there and you know a stock that stays flat for a year if you're paying attention and you're writing properly that's something that will give you a three or four hundred percent return over the course of a year as long as you stay patient and as long as you do it correctly so you know that's that that's how tape will tell you when and where to write and and i can tell you that my writing skills have gotten so much better because of tape and you know that's where you're seeing you know improvement on gains over time from and you know like instead of like 25 or 30 percent you know all of a sudden now you're 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 hitting 100 200 300 percent on a position like that right right and is this how limited i mean you have a pretty large account but you also talk about doing this you know you you rebuilt your account you rebuilt your ability to do this from a very small place like do you, how limiting do you think it is to have a smaller account? Let's say, you know, 10, 15 grand. I started with five grand. <laughs> so, and, and that was after being wiped out two previous times. And I, I got wiped out. I wiped out, um, I wiped out an account that was almost 2 million. And uh, I wiped out an account that was over a hundred grand. Um, and then I, it, so the, the 2 million, happened back after uh, 9 11 and then i had built back up i went through a divorce and was trying to claw back and wiped out another uh, hundred thousand dollar account and then i had to scrape and save um and and built up five grand and i started trading five grand again and and that's how i built back up to where i am today and and you know i tell people all the time um you know a uh, brown man in the room when when he was like just coming in here and, and figuring stuff out too i was always encouraging him hey you know you, you get a win stack it stack 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 because you're <laughs> you know the, the guy that comes in and tries to hit the home run or you know looks at this type of a strategy and says well it's not happening fast enough for me you know you're 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 asking for trouble you're asking for trouble which is why i've got a method of, of doing this to where you just continue to stack your wins. And, and then when you get to a point to where now I can take a shot down the field, hey, I've got this pile of cash and I want to take a, a bigger chance, then that's that's where you get the opportunity to hit some home runs. But if you do it the opposite way, more times than not, people just get wiped out. And I think that that speaking to what touching on what you just talked about it's a really good example of how you combine your self-awareness your understanding of your own psychology with the strategy right i mean one of the reasons that you developed this strategy is because you understand yourself and your your propensity to get pulled into you know positions that you probably don't want to be in right or that you're not going to exit you're not going to sort of stack up those wins in the way that you should and so i think that's one of the reasons why you gravitated so heavily towards this long-term you know position management where you can really kind of stack up those things integrated tape reading into it so you feel confident you feel like you have an edge in the short term and then you have that like kind of casino like the house money that you can take those whatever you want to say those lotto plays those higher risk plays yeah absolutely and and the other the other piece to it is that um and and guys in the master class know and you know i alert them as well as you know listen the other the other piece to this is we all know that at, at some given point in time we're going to wake up one day one morning and we'll be down big you know and i don't mean like three four five hundred points i mean like 1500 points 2500 points you know one of the things that we also do in 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 this part of the class is is we also take those wins and we're smart and we also buy some long-term protection because when that day comes, not only is your portfolio not gonna get wiped out, 
you're going to be profitable because of that crash protection that we put in there. So because of my catastrophe and what I went through, these are the things that I developed and put together over this period of time because I, I can't imagine going back to where I was yeah. before. There, there's, just, there's just no way I can put myself back there. No way. I had yeah. to find a way to make that go away. And I think that's one of the reasons why you and Lucci have had the connection that you've had, you've had connections like this with other people in the room, um, with, with a lot of students that, that we have come in. Um, because we, oftentimes the people that come to us, you know, people in, in the webinar right now or, or members of the same room, they've been through a couple different trading programs before. We don't pour money into marketing in the way that a lot of other educators out there do. So if you Google, like a lot of the search terms in the SEO, you know, we're not the first ones that come up. So a lot of people that come us come to us have been around for a little bit longer and they've been in this boxing match and they've been haymaker a couple of times and they they know this is something like I can't go back to doing what I've been doing, right? And it's one of the things that tape printing is not easy to learn, right? I mean you can you can speak to this. Like there's it's not it's not impossible, but it's not easy to learn. But you realize that the difference between putting in that effort and going through it and challenging yourself and, and you know failing to doing it day after day until you get it down. That experience, as difficult it is, as it is, and challenging as it can be, is way better than going back to where you were, trading blind and pulling up accounts and just having that feeling of like agonizing frustration all the time. Um, and so I think that emotional awareness and that emotional epiphany, you and Lucci share in that a lot, and you share that with other people in the room. And I think you teach to that um, too, like the importance of paying attention to that. Yeah, and um, I mean, Lucci's emotional. I'm certainly an emotional um, guy, and it's really hard to keep emotion out of trading and tape and understanding when and where and or why something is happening or experiencing something like today when Trump shot that text out and you, <laughs> it was t it was perfectly that the market was perfectly teed up to reverse. We just needed that text. And as soon as that text came in, I was like, we're going to have about 30, 60 seconds here to do something and 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 make some money off of it. But if you're just sitting at home or you're at work or, or you're somewhere else where you can't be on top of that, you, you look up an hour later and you're like, what happened? Right. Like that's. <laughs> Right. That's a that's a problem, and and you've got to be able to 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 navigate your way through those through those times and those situations without having crazy emotional swings, and it's 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 just not easy to do. It's just that yeah. there's yeah, it's not easy. And you guys preach a lot about just like self acceptance about the fact that you are you're gonna have emotional swings. You're a human. Don't ever think that someone who's mastered trading has been able to sever their emotions you know it's just not it's not the case if anything you guys preach being able to be in touch with your emotions be aware of them and use that as an indicator right hey i feel freaked out right now because this thing's moving against me how do i make how do i acknowledge that feeling and make sure that it's not distracting me do i need to buy protection on something just so i know that like it's not eating up brain power for me so i feel like that's a part that's baked into your strategy is the emotional management aspect to it so and speaking speaking directly to that because I know um because I know what my emotions are um I learned instead it, what I did was I basically said fine if I can't control the emotion at least I understand what it is that I do and I can tell you that I'm I'm a pro at picking the top of something because I've done it so many times of of chasing the long right Right. Something makes the move and I'm like, okay, now I'm finally convinced that this thing is still going to go up. And I was buying at places where, you know, you'd wake up in the morning and sure enough, things down four bucks. And, you know, instead of buying at that spot where it was down four bucks, I bought right at the top. I mean, I can't tell you how many times in my life, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've top ticked something. And, and right. it was because based, you know, mostly on emotion, not on tape, not on any kind of technicals, not on any kind of fundamentals, just because I was like, I need to be in it, right? And I need to be in it now. And so what I did was I was, you know, I said, well, if I'm having a hard time changing that behavior, I can change the trade. So changing the trade to writing and 
understanding where tape and technicals line up, you know, that, that just, that put the emotion into my favor as opposed to it working against me. And, and that's not an easy place to get to. And, and once you can find your way there, you, you, you'll start to have more, um, you know, more successes that way as well. So, you know, to find a way to use the emotion to your advantage as opposed to trying to, 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 to harness or, or change it, that, that can be a tough thing to do. Right. And this stuff extends into the, the agonizing part and the beautiful part about, about trading or any sort of high performance um, you know, sport, entrepreneurship, you know, athletics or whatever, is that it bleeds into the rest of your life too. You, you do need to make changes and shift your mentality in the rest of your life in order to have the success you want to have in the markets. Um, but that's, I, we'll talk more about that next week with Lucci on Tuesday. Um, Ron, let's get, you want to dive into some more specifics? You want to, I think I, you had a couple trade examples that you had pulled up, um, some stuff from the recent days. Um, you want to use those as examples to, or maybe just one, and we'll kind of go go deep into it. And you can talk about, you know, how you spotted this and how it came together and how it illustrates some of the principles that we've been talking about. Yeah, hey, give, me, um, give me one second. I just want to pull up one other screen to see if I can pop over to it. Um, cool. And hey guys, questions coming in here. These are great, great questions. Um, yeah, we're going to do a thick Q&A here. Hang on, hang on. A lot of these I think we're going to answer today. Uh, let's see, let me just pull. Abdul, you asked where Lucci is. Uh, he's doing the Quote the Raven podcast, QTR. Plus, it's also how many how many big ass traders can you have in one webinar, right? I don't know if there's room in this on these screens for Ranchero and Lucci's. I would say ego, but you guys actually don't even really have egos anymore. So, count sizes? Um, no, he's doing uh, he's doing QTR today. I've done. All right, we can see your screen now. Okay. All right. So, um, a little example here of what we've been doing. Um, this is Biogen. And let me just pull up, this is a daily chart. And this is a charting software called TradingView. Um, I use it just because it's, um, it's pretty user friendly and I don't, I don't have a ton of um, stuff going. Um, I do like to combine some technicals with tape. Uh, so I use, technicals as basically kind of an alert system for me to be looking at changes of character in tape. So some of the lines that you see on here, um, I, I won't go into too much uh, detail about those now, but what I will say is that this is how I kind of set myself up for looking for um, places to make trades. So this is Biogen. Biogen got beat up. Um, they had some bad clinical data. I don't remember exactly what the specifics were. I do know that, you know, over a uh, one year time frame that, you know, Biogen at one time was performing well. Um, and then we woke up one morning to this. And I saw this as an opportunity because from its highs for the year, which was over here around what, three, Oh, that was even higher. Um, all right, around 383. So, you know, in my head, the first thing that I thought was, here's a good company. They had some stuff go wrong. Um, you know, they came out, they addressed it, they talked about it. Um, they said, we'll recover from it. And the directors and officers put their money where their mouths are back here in. May. So when I saw that, I, you know, that was, that was when I thought, okay, this is, this is an opportunity for a good company that's been beaten up to, um, to, to, you know, to, to really lever down. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at leaps and we're coming out to January of 2020.
we're looking for something that's got a heavy delta. Again, in the master course, I, I explain why we do that. And then on a weekly basis, what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to write against this position. And I know that on this position that I have some ranges. I have a I have a 50 day moving average, which has been supporting the stock of recently. I've got some other moving averages and some support and resistance areas where I know that I need to start looking at tape. So on a weekly basis against that long term position, what I can do is I can write and I can write options. And for example, let's just look at next week. And this stock is right at a resistance level right now, which is around 242. So if I want to go out a little bit further on these strikes and let's say I want to go to 252 and a half. I can write this right now for $1.20. Now, this stock may be poised for a breakout because this is its third time that we're about to pop through this level. And when and if this thing gets up and, and runs, it's going to be pretty hard to catch because it's coiled up, right? And it's got a huge gap to make up. You got directors and officers buying in. You've been through earnings. They did a decent job with earnings. They made some good announcements. The story is starting to develop and evolve, right? So in this period through here, you know, I, I, we're writing in a one-to-one -one ratio. So what that means is if you're, if you're long 10 contracts, you're writing 10 against those every single week. So if I'm collecting $1.25 every single week, and I do that over the course of a year on a stock that's, you know, staying flat, um, you know, I'm I'm going to do that. Let's say if it's 52 weeks, you know, that's I'm collecting 65. And if I've bought the option, the long term option, um, where were we at here? Uh, the Jan 20s. If I've paid, let's say, 34.90 for these for these options, well, you can see the math. Not only have I paid for the option at 34.90. Um, if I collect 65, I'm putting an additional 31 in my pocket that doesn't include if this stock breaks out. If this stock breaks out, what we're doing along the way is we're rolling those long-term options up to the next strike. So we're profiting on those rolls. And as we roll up, what will happen is the stock will naturally reach a point of where it starts to tire out, it needs to consolidate. We start writing again, right? So it's not rocket science, but there are very specific details as to how that works and a patient trader can do very well with this strategy the people that don't do well with the strategy is are, are people who start to do it it doesn't they don't they don't make enough money quick enough or they have different expectations about what's going to happen and then they go back to their old habits so you can't take a strategy and go to the market and say this is the strategy i'm going to use and just and just do that strategy because the market doesn't care what your strategy is you have to learn the ebb and flow of the market and then apply the correct strategy so what you have going on here are, are a number of things you've got buying something that's already been beaten up probability says even if the market gets crushed like today we had a nice sell-off what did this stock do i mean it's up right so probability says You've already taken the whipping, so chances of it going down from here are a lot less. It doesn't guarantee anything. It's just putting probability on your side, right? And at the same time, if the market is getting beaten up and does hold this stock down, we can be writers. So you're in a long-term hold position, and on a short-term basis, you have some other strategies that you can put to work. Now, if you're not a good writer of calls, you know, what else could you do? Well, you know, you could you could write condors or you could play short term puts and calls on this. There are a, a, a lot of different choices that you have to make with this strategy. And I kind of walk you through how to handle all of those different strategies and the, the whens and the whys. So that's that's a, this is a really nice example of um, a stock that since May till now has not only paid for the long because we've rolled it up once. But we've been writing against it and we've also been writing condors on it because it's been in such a nice channel. So this has been a, a fantastic stock if you followed along with, with what I did. And so can you speak a little bit to in your sort of pre-tape days or maybe before that, how you would have approached 
a trade like this in a less evolved way and maybe pitfalls that you would have fallen into? You, you alluded a little bit to being impatient, um, you know, forcing strategy too hard. Are there other things that you feel like you would have done in your old days that now you, you, you know not to? I mean, I'm, well, I will say this is that writing on this type of position is so much easier now because of, of, of knowing how to read the tape and understanding that I know my tendencies, my own tendencies are to get excited and buy something at the top. Now, when I get excited with something's at the top, I know, okay, can I look at the tape? And do I have an opportunity to write something here? So that's that's right. been a huge momentum shift in in how I've approached it. And in the past, what I would do is I would just say, this is great. It's working. It's starting to break out. And I'm going to double down here, right? And you double down at the top. Like I, I, that would have been a that would have been a very common mistake for me to make before I I got here and and learned how to read tape and understand on the other side of the coin, just what we do every day in the steam room with how Jesus handles everything. And that's basically to, to keep us on track with, with sentiment and flow and what's happening there. So it's a combination of taking all of these things and putting them together so that you can spit out some information that allows you to make a good decision. That's our edge. Our edge are, is, is, is all of these things, the, the sentiment, the flow, and the tape. And then, of course, if you if you're if you're tuned in, you're you're trading with some of the other people in the room um, who really know what they're doing. Um, you know, this this stuff can work really well for you. Right, right, yeah. And we've got a couple of those people in the room uh, in this what we're on right now. Um, there is, and I mean, we could go into another example here, but you guys, there's some really great questions, so we can, um, you know, we can. Uh, we can actually just use those to kind of guide some of this conversation. But Tim, who is one of the, um, you know, one of the more advanced and, and experienced and biggest contributors to the room, you know, people who are in the room have seen you know, Tim and Ranch do do webinars together. Um, and he's saying, you know, Rod, Ranch, can you shed light on how to stay calm, patient, clear-minded of the big opportunities in a table like we've had in the last 24 hours? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> it's, it, I, I don't know that, um, I don't know that there's a good I don't know that there's a good answer for that. What I can tell you is that when when I'm reading things correctly, I'm seeing change in tape at let's say um a a a, a different time frame. Tim is I mean Tim is one of the, the 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 better technical traders that I've worked with. He's taught me a ton. Um I think some of the things that I do are are more thirty thousand foot view than what he does because he'll flip around a lot of different time frames. The more time frames that I flip around in, the more frustrated and emotional I can get. So when I'm getting to that time, when I'm getting to that place, I just take a step back. And I find that when I take a step back, some things just go smoother and start to fit together better because you don't always see change in tape immediately. And you know, trying to see change in tape and spy you've got to be a robot to be able to 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 do that you it's just not i i don't know how anybody can do that but i can see change in tape and other things that resemble the spy i can see change in tape like uh, you know a google or an amazon or um you know a, a biogen i can see change in tape there and sometimes i have to kind of take a little bit of a a leap of faith on something else that i'm i'm trading based on that if I can't read tape and something else. Like Bo Boeing's a good example of, um, you know, the, the change in tape in Boeing can be subtle and it can happen quickly. And that's one that um, requires a little bit of, you know, you're, you just become a local in, in that particular stock, which is why I try to trade a, a smaller basket of things because the more familiar I am with them, the easier that's it really is for, for me to trade them. That's a really good way to put it, become a local for the stock. I mean, I remember when I first started working with Gucci, he referred to stocks as she. She was always like, this Google, she moves like this. And I was like, she, why are you using like a female pronoun? It's like a boat or something to you. But he had like, he had built up these characters in his mind of these 
stocks. He knew how they moved. He knew how market makers um, would would position themselves and trade them differently. He knew certain types of algos that would they would participate in. Mean, he could kind of see the activity in, in the tape of them. So he really got to know these these names really well. And that's something that he realized that he needed to do personally. I mean, I think you guys just heard Ranch say and 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 compare himself to Tim. These are two very experienced, um, successful traders who who throw up, you know, awesome, consistent numbers on a daily basis. And they approach the same markets differently, right? They use a lot of the same skills, a lot of the same um, <clears throat> tools, but they're not doing things the same way. And a lot of that has developed. They are applying strategies that work for their psychology. They they don't fight their emotions in the same way. I mean, this is, it always strikes me when we talk about your trading is instead of fighting your emotions and saying, I, I really should be able to do things a certain way and I shouldn't feel like this or I should ignore this, you're just like, I don't want to feel this way, so I'm going to make this easy on myself. And that's something, if you guys ever read Market Wizards, I remember Paul Tudor Jones talking about that. He would say, if I feel uncomfortable about a position, if I don't like it, I get rid of it. I take it off. That's the beauty of trading. You don't have to play. And I trade best when I feel comfortable and confident in my position. So I think sometimes traders just make it so hard on themselves. And, you know, there's no reason to do that. Totally agree. I mean, there's, you know, there's guys that come into, um, there's so many different services and, you know, and, and gurus and people out there that want to teach you like, um, I don't know, like a, a technical chart pattern set up or, a, you know, Ichimoku cloud or, you know, whatever it is, like everybody's got something that, that they use that works, that's comfortable for them. Um, this is the only spot that I know of, and I've done this a long time where I can come in and I've learned something tangible. Reading tape is, is real. And for me, combining it with what is, you know, what I think are good technical levels. And the only reason I use technicals is they don't, I don't care. They don't matter to me, but what they do tell me is that they matter to other people. And if they matter to other people and I can see the change in tape, I can start to see the change in the psychology. I can start to see the change in the sentiment and that's my edge. That's what gives me better probability than what other traders have at that specific moment of time. Right. And that's, that's all, that's all that I need to do to make, this shit work because ultimately, I mean, it's it's a crystal ball. We don't, nobody knows what's going to happen in the next 30 seconds. We, all we can do is put all these things together and say, this is the best probability. I know how the cards are stacked at this moment in time, and this is my best guess. And more times than not, you wind up, you know, in a situation where you have the best probability for success you're still going to lose that's that's just part of it and i'm wrong a lot but when you recognize you're wrong you move on right you you close it down and you move on that's that's the key to, as well to, to this is being able to say I, i'm wrong and that's it let's let's move on right all right well extremely well said um let's get into some q a we've got a lot of questions from you guys uh before we do that I'll give a shameless plug to the master course where this webinar and this whole series uh, for the 3LT playbook is all because the next master course starts uh, August 12th, live master course, August 12th. Um, you guys have probably know about it at this point. It is, you are learning every single thing that Lucci does, tape reading, trading psychology, how he looks at options, how he looks at flow, how he brings it all together into, into a coherent strategy that works for him and then how to apply it to yourself. So you get 12 evening classes, you get uh, four live tape reading sessions, you get access to the steam room for a month, uh, basically teach you every single thing that you need to know in order to, to trade uh, full time or even part time if you want to, but to really have the skills that you need in order to make it. Um, and then we recently added Ranch in here as a guest educator. So you get, um, I think we're doing two classes right now, right? Ranch, two classes. Um, where this is the, what you just heard is the tip of the iceberg. He goes extremely deep and he shows you, you know, every piece of what you need to know in order to execute on the type of strategies that, that we just talked about uh, in this webinar. So you can get a very good discount on that if you go to 3ltplaybook.com and you opt in and you go through 
that, uh, that experience. It's a really cool experience that we put together for you. I think it gives a very good sense of, of who we are and what we're all about. And if you get to the end of that, you get a great discount on, on the course. So you can do one-time payment, you can do payment plans. Highly recommend, check it out. If you wanna learn from this guy, the man in front of you, uh, you know, firsthand, that's the way to do it. That's the reason we created the course. So, um, all right, let's get into a couple questions. Let's see. Do you always, this is from Lee, do you always buy or write insurance for your option trades? Do I always buy? Um, buy or write insurance for your option trades? That, that depends on the time frame. If it's in this longer term strategy for me, absolutely. And, and the other part to this strategy from a portfolio protection standpoint is that when you have started to build up some wins from your writing activities, part of that money, when we're at all time highs and the VIX is at its lower points, we're going to go out and we're going to shop for some crash protection puts, whether that's on the SPY, the diamonds, the Qs. We're going to buy some of that and sprinkle it around in our portfolio because one day we're going to wake up down 1,500, 2,500 points. And guess what? Instead of being the guy that's sitting there, you know, with, with zero chance of covering and you're down on all of your other positions, let's say 30, 40%, well, that crash protection has now not only flipped your portfolio to neutral, but you're in a profitable situation. Now you have cash to go out and buy all of the really great high quality companies on sale. So, I mean, I'll take Google at 50% off or Amazon at 50% off or Microsoft at 50% off all day long. But if you don't have the money there to do it, you can't do it. So that's how I view insurance on long-term positions, short-term positions. If I'm scalping, um, day trading, or if I'm um, doing some kind of a, you know, a, a swing or a mini swing, I rarely use protection on those types of positions. If, if I'm in them and I've gotten it wrong, I'll either close or flip and go the other way. So that's that's how I that's my that's the only way that I ensure those types of positions. Right. Okay, got it. Um, Nathan's asking: Is leverage sometimes required to have the correct position sizing? Like, if your position needs to be forty thousand, but you have a twenty thousand dollar account. Um, I only trade options. So if I I I, I can't use margin to buy options, I've got to have cash. I can use the margin in my account for writing activity, they'll, they'll give me buying power for that. But even then I'm, you know, you're, you're writing against a position and, you know, we'll, we'll talk about this more in the class. I'm not a writer of anything naked ever. Like that's just not something that I do. It's, it's, it's a really bad idea. And I've seen people get wrecked, just wrecked from, from naked writing. So, um, you know that's that's something that I'll 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 go into more more detail about in the class. But um, you know I'm I'm not using any kind of margin. I don't trade common ever. I'm an options only trader. Um, and there are going to be there are going to be stocks that that move really well um, that are let's say in the 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 tens the the teens the twenties where if you are if you can trade common you'll do really well but if you trade the options you you'll just get burned because the spreads are stupid and you're you're never going to catch an, a real opportunity to to make money in some of those goofy trading stocks so i don't know if i've answered the question or not but you know that's 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 just kind of my my view on um on margin if you've got a cash account and you're tagged a, a day trader, you're you're limited. If you're tagged a day trader, but you've got margin and you've got over 25k, you're good. Um, if you've got you know like five or ten grand, you can get margin on your account. If you're not tagged a day trader, you can use the strategy that that I'll that I'll teach you, and and you can you know you can trade that a lot because you won't you won't be day trading. You'll be writing and you'll be waiting for premium to to burn out and then move on to the next week. So I hope that helps a little bit. Yeah, for sure. And this is this Chase's uh, question dovetails very much with what you were just talking about, but again, we can probably go a little bit deeper. Uh, when you're starting with a $5,000 count, were you using your long-term strategy? Were you also short trading or doing a combi or were you short trading or doing a combination? I'm asking because I have a small account and I'm questioning my ability to write effectively with small account. So it was, um, 
it was the only strategy that I used to dig myself out of the hole because if you guys remember, um, you know, I was in a situation where I was, I mean, I, it, it took a long time to, for me to save five grand. I was in a really bad spot. Um, I, I couldn't put the five grand at risk on something. I mean, there were tons of trades that I could have taken where I, I probably would have done really well, you know, like doubled or tripled the account size in a really short period of time. I couldn't take that risk at that time. So this was the strategy that I had to use. And yes, I did write having only a $5,000 account. So, you know, I, I dug out of the hole um, on stocks like, um, uh, like uh, Google and um, Amazon and um, Priceline. Those were, those were stocks that, that dug me out of the hole. So, you know, I was buying like one contract or two contracts at a time. Um, and I was, I, I, I was playing that game of, you know, right, let the premium burn, get the cash, build it up. And, you know, it didn't take long, um, but it, 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 it didn't go fast either. You know what I mean? You, you have to be a patient person to make that work. Yeah. Got it. Um, Paul, your question is, you got a double question here. And some of this is like, we just don't, we can't go into enough depth in this to fully answer some of these questions. Um, what do you mean by flow and what are sweepers? Also, what are looking, what are you looking for when you look at the level two quotes ticking? I mean, we can't, probably can't even answer the level two thing. And level and the, and the first question in terms of flow and sweepers, I can actually have Spencer send you an email directly on that. But do you want to speak just briefly to how flow works into all this for you, Ranch? How you use that alongside tape? And, yeah, I mean, if you if you haven't spent any time in style, in the steam room, there, Charlie, was there a three day trial period? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if three you, day free trial. You guys pop in there. Yeah, WallStreetJesus.com. Just go go and pop in. So if you go and pop into the steam room, you know, um, Jesus is in there all day calling out unusual option activity, and there are several other indicators that we all keep track of to give us a, a view and an idea of sentiment and you know which direction things are headed and did things change and today's a perfect example of sentiment and flow changing within a matter of minutes as soon as trump set that tweet out everything that we look at and hold dear and important inside the room changed i mean it, everything went 180 so that's what I'm talking about when I talk about sentiment and flow. It everything was green and and looked great, and as soon as he sent that tweet out, everything went red and got really raw and really nasty. And and that's one of the things that you know you'll you learn in 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 the room. Um, you've got Jesus talking about sentiment on his webinars a couple of times a week. You've got Lucci who teaches tape. So when somebody's asking about level two. You know that's what Leech, that's what Lucci is going to teach you, and you know reading tape is is um, for some people it comes easy. Uh, for me, it took six months of hardcore sitting there and reading it day after day after day after day after day, and then it just clicked one day. And, and I think that happens to a lot of people. And I can tell you, every time I go back into the master class and listen to Lucci speak. I get something new and I get something useful out of it. And I'm always surprised because, you know, just when you think I'm like, all right, I got this down, you go in there and you listen to him talk. And I was like, oh shit, I didn't catch that. And I got it now. So that's, that's a huge advantage. It's a huge edge. Well said. All right, we'll do one more question and then anything else guys, you will have to ask Ron in the master course when you get your ass in there. Um, so yeah, let's see. We got a lot of them in here. We'll grab one. Uh, a lot of just you, the man, launches in here, which is <laughs> pretty good too. Um, this is a good one from from Havana. Um, Ron, what are some of the rules of the road for writing? Just like basics, not going into the, everything you teach in the course, but if you were going to say one thing to keep in mind if you're writing. So in my humble opinion, if, if for me, writing comes down to, have I picked a good technical area of support and or resistance? 
and am I far enough away from that area of support and resistance where if a stock gets to that area and tape changes and it starts going against my right, have I picked a good spot to where I can flip or what I call morph and get myself back to even? Because the worst thing is to ignore something and let a right go against you because when a right goes against you, it can become very painful very quickly and you can lose a lot of money. But if you've picked a good area of support and or resistance and you're paying attention to tape and tape confirms either one way or the other, you have the ability to flip and, and get yourself out of that trade. But I don't know that I can, again, I don't know that I can give you like specific um, rules today. Uh, I can tell you like right now I'm in a position, I'm in Boeing 330s, which I wrote last Friday. And I can tell you that I'm watching that 330 area very carefully. And if I see change in character and tape at 330, if it gets there, it, you know, I think there's the potential for it to break lower. And if it does, I'll flip that position. In other words, I'll buy it back. And then I will go, instead of being short that position, I'll go long, double in size till I'm break even, and I'll shut it down and I'll walk away, right? So that's, that's how I wiggle my way off of the hook when I'm wrong on those. Awesome. Well, Ranch, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for doing the master course. Again, you if you guys want to join the master course, I highly suggest you go through the 3LT playbook. That's three, the number three, not spelled out, just the number three, ltplaybook.com. Go through that. You get a steep discount on the course if you go to the end. And that's how you can learn not just directly from Lucci, but directly from Ranch. We'll start in that August 12th is the next live session. So we'll see you guys there, hopefully. All right, Charles. Thanks, Charlie. We'll see you Tuesday, law number three, psychology of trading uh, with Lucci. Learn your, learn yourself, know yourself. It's going to be good. So we'll see you then. All right, guys. Thanks, Ron. All right, awesome. Thanks. Yeah.